day, all. Uh, my name is Caitlin Barthol. I'm with the K-State Research and Extension. I'm an ag agent here in the Meredith Zane District. And I'm on location at the Paola Livestock Auction with owner and operator, right? Yep. Uh, Maury Borquin. And uh, we're going to kind of pick Maury's brain on how uh, beef producers can get a little more added value on um, when they're weaning calves and bringing calves here into the cell barn. Mm -hmm. Before we get started, could you give a little history on the cell barn? Uh, yes, we, we started here in uh, the fall of 1999, so we've been here for you know a little over 20 years, and um, my family and I, and, and uh, we, we farm and graze cattle and, and have a cow herd and, and just uh, and run this operation here and and uh, farming was tough so we decided we needed you know to take on something else so that's what we uh, when it came up for sale we went ahead and gave it a try and seemed to work out. Cool so this is a family kind of ran business too. Yep well, it is. I bet that's hopefully fun right? Most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> yeah. And what's the process for people to do when they're wanting to bring steers or cows or bulls in to get get sold, um, should they when when should they contact you? When should they bring animals in? They can call us anytime. We'll answer the phone. Um, you know, seven days a week, we'll we'll answer the phone. Uh, we have we unload cattle just about every day, most of the time. Uh, the the cattle for Friday sale. At least half of them will come in on Thursday. A lot of the bigger bunches come in on Thursday and we'll put them on hay and water overnight and that gives us time early Friday morning to start sorting on them and, get, and getting our work done. Um, some of the smaller groups come in on Friday morning which is fine and because we we can be sorting on the big bunches early in the morning while, while the smaller bunches are getting hauled, hauled to town and so uh, we probably get 50 to maybe 60 percent of the cattle in the day before the sale. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously the sale starts at, at 1 o'clock and we, we try to, to sell the cattle that's, that's came in the day before earlier. Okay. And, uh, you know, just for the reason, uh, you know, they were uh, willing to bring them in earlier. It doesn't always get 100 percent that way, but we, we, we really work hard to try to keep that in order and then uh, you know you, you, you get done and, and you can pick up your check and uh, if you don't pick up your check uh, we, we mail it Friday night. This time of year obviously we're getting close to the first of year tax mm -hmm. time we have some guys that that defer their money which it's totally legal like grain in storage or anything mm -hmm. else and we, we have people defer part or all of their check and then right after the first of the year then they come in and we we settle up with them. So we have some questions for you on how beef producers can get a little more added value um, mm -hmm. especially at, like at weaning time some tips for when they do wean um, and then also some tips on when they bring them in to try and get the the most bang for their buck. We kind of made up a little scenario for producers um, in this scenario that might be what they're going through right now so the scenario is um, I'm a first time seller here okay. and so um, I have about 30 head of mainly a black Angus cross um, that's a good balanced mixture of steers and heifers. I will say two of those um, have some horns to them um, and aren't completely black and that's due to the neighbor's bull jumping the fence because yeah. <laughs> we all know that can happen. Happens. Um, for they are, they are not weaned yet but I'm willing to put the work in to get them weaned soon. Um, they're all mainly gentle. Um, they are bunk broke because uh, they come up and get fed once a day with the cows. And uh, if I had to weigh them, they're probably 400 to 650 in, in weight. Um, so that's kind of what I'm bringing to you. Um, so I got some questions on to kind of help me with that process. The first question would be, when I wean, are there certain shots, um, vaccines, or implants I should maybe think of? Yeah, the the best thing to do, um, I guess, on, on the vaccination program is uh, you can go online or talk to your local vet and and uh, 
that you know they need to have a four-way virus shot along with a pasteurella okay. and there are numerous companies that do a great job with that vaccine and um, you can get it with the pasteurella in it now where you know it saves you a, a, an injection site you know and so you can give and obviously they need black leg and helps them but th there's a whole list of things that you can do um, on the vaccines and uh, anything you do uh, will will be helpful when you sell your calves and we we have generally uh, not every set but a lot of the the people will send the vet certificate in with their calves okay. and we'll you know make that known when make we announce, announce it yeah we try to announce that if uh, you know if they've had uh, two rounds or one okay. round or how long they've been weaned uh, I'm taking a bit of white cough cattle. Now, these cattle all home raised around right registered Angus AI bulls. Weaned October the 7th, two rounds of shot, modified lepto, worm, running on pasture. They are broke to a bunk right there, and they are an electric fence bro. You know, it is a major deal. The, uh, the vaccinations anymore really important. We've got a few people, uh, buyers, that they, they just, they, if the calves haven't had any shot, they don't want to bid on them unless it's at a, a fairly large discount. Okay. So, um, it's getting to where you, you really need, you know, you really need to spend the money on the calves. It's not that expensive, especially if one of them gets sick and dies, it'll pay for the whole, right. the whole deal. Yes. You know? Do you guys see a difference between, on mainly on castration, do you see a difference between knife cut or a banded? Um, do you see it, maybe a price difference or a health difference? Not really. Um, uh, banded versus knife cut. The, the thing about knife cut steers is uh, w when they cut them with a knife, you know they're steers. Mm -hmm. The banded calves we have and see it not every year, but usually there's a set or two a year that they're banded wrong mm -hmm. and, and they'll be banded with the testicles in their belly so they think they actually you know done some good with this band and when in essence it really it's it's hurt because they get when they have to surgically remove them they take the chance of them bleeding to death or you know and it sets them back yes when you have to do that but if you band the calf correctly, give them the tetanus shot and do everything like you're supposed to do, there's really not, uh, uh, we don't see a difference in price on that, but uh, you, you really, you, you need to make sure you know how to band the calf if you're going to band them. And then um, I guess another question with that, do you see a price difference on steers versus, I guess when they, they come in they're still bulls? Yeah. Yeah, um, the smaller the calf, the less uh, decline in price you'll see, obviously. You know, if you bring a 300-pound bull to town, he, he'll be back of a steer, but not near as much as one weighing 650 or 700. It's already got the bull head, and, mm -hmm. you know, they, mm -hmm. they start, and then when you cut them, they start looking awful staggy, and they don't make a good steer if you wait too long. Now, I watched a, a deal on K-States. Uh, people were claiming they picked up extra pounds by leaving them bulls and then cutting them late. And uh, their veterinarians say that that's a myth and, and don't do that. Mm -hmm. So we always feel like, you know, if you get those things cut from no later than 475 pounds, you know, 450. Ideal time to cut a bull calf is 300 pounds, 200, two to 300. You know, they cut nice and and it's not near the stress on them as it, as it is when they get bigger, gotcha. obviously. Right. So, but there there there'll be a, a, a quite a, a price difference on a bigger bigger calf. And I mentioned I have the two different ones, <laughs> the two that have the horns. Uh huh. Um. So when I'm weaning them, in your opinion, is it best to dehorn them to keep them as the horns, or is it just 
since they have the different kind of genetics, uh -huh. I'm going to get a hit on them. Yeah, there'll be a decline on them. I don't know. It'd be a toss-up on that. You know, sometimes uh, we see a few of those horned cattle in our area where, where quite a few guys uh, team rope. Yes. You know, yeah. so if they come in and they got horns big enough to rope, or, you know, they might buy them for recreation. Yeah, that's and it's true. something you don't think about, but for cattle going to feed or something, you know, they, they normally won't buy those type of animals anyway. Okay. So it's, uh, I don't know, you're just going to take a discount and okay. you have to live with it, right? <laughs> and hopefully uh, get the electric fence on top of the fence so we don't have that problem again. <laughs> yeah, everybody has that every once in a while, the bulls get out or whatnot. I mean, that's just part of having, having a livestock. Yep. I want to clarify some, some weaning terms, I guess. Um, when they say hard wean, mm -hmm. that, now that means if I wean them the night and then I bring them in the next morning, that's... Is that what the hard wean kind no. of means? Or when, when you say hard wean, that means they've been weaned, you know, a long time. Now, um, you know, because those animals are hard and and we, you know, that that is just a determination. You know, the auctioneer will say, you know, they'll either say long time wean or hard wean. Okay. Or one or the other, which is one and the same. Okay. Uh, short wean is is a calf that's not weaned very long. Okay. I'm really glad I asked that because I had that term mixed up in my mind. So, uh -huh. all right, so long term or hard weaned is that, and then short weaned. Short weaned. Yeah. Okay, see, I I had my facts wrong. So, thank you. Not a problem. <laughs> That's why we're doing this today. <laughs> right. And uh, we've noticed a lot in the fall of the year when the temperatures fluctuate a lot. It's, it's more important to wean, when you wean a, a spring calf in the fall, to wean them, you know, 45 days. Uh, sometimes you can get away at certain, you know, if the weather's going to be pretty good. But if you're only going to wean your calves 10 days or two weeks, you might as well not do it. Yeah. Because everybody thinks, you know, I've weaned them two weeks at home, feeding them, they're lining up good. And that's fine, and, and they they will stay healthy at home. But when you bring them into us, and a buyer buys them, co-mingles them with cattle Others. from wherever, all over, and you know the cattle have only had ten days. It, they're just prime for going through the sweat, or if a disease is going to come on. And so uh, those cattle are more susceptible to get sick on the buyer. Oh, okay. and, and, and a person doesn't think they're going to get sick because they're healthy at home, mm -hmm. and they are. Right. They come here, sorted okay. around, stood around, put on a truck, hauled to western Kansas, wherever, mixed with cattle from other places. Those kind of cattle, you know, that they, they, it just stresses them too much, and there's an incubation period, you know, on a disease or whatever, and it just seems like you know, uh, we've got guys that if them calves are weaned 10, 10 days, they, they just they don't want them. They don't want them? Don't want them. They would rather they were fresh off the cow. Gotcha. Than wean that short of a period. And, and we get quite a few people, you know, you think, you know, are your kids weaned? Oh, yeah. How long? A week. Well, that's that's not enough. And that and that actually hurts them. Okay. You know? and, and they, you know, they, they just, and I can take them, you know, we have before just to try to help the industry, mm -hmm. call them up. I, I want it. I want, to, I want you to look at you, the guy that bought your calves. These calves are sick because they don't believe it. Ah. You know, and and so the next year the guy's like, I do not want to buy those calves unless mm -hmm. he's going to wean them a little longer or, or give them, you know, because uh, they track these calves. Everybody's mm -hmm. got computers, and the and back the, tags, yeah. everybody, you know, they, and we have people calling us, hey, when's such and such going to sell his calves next year? We got along great with them or the opposite. So I said I had a kind of the balanced mixture of steers and heifers. Mm -hmm. When I bring them in, am I going to get the same for my steers and my heifers? Or am I probably, I'm guessing I'm going to get more for my steers than I would my heifers. Yeah. And am I correct on that? Yeah. Uh, a lot of people uh, graze steers only and feed steers in the feedlot. And um, you know, heifer doesn't gain as good as a steer. And, and they tracked, 
you know, feedlots, track, you know, the performance, and uh, and a lot of times uh, a heifer is, uh, you know, could be as much as fifteen dollars a hundred back, and it sounds kind of severe, but on a five weight heifer you got seventy five dollars, mm -hmm. but in the lifetime of, of of the heifer grazing on on feed they feel like they they uh, get that much. Get that return. More, yeah. Maybe. Okay. The, the steer will return them quite a bit more. They'll get bigger in the feedlot, you know, and when fat cattle a dollar a pound or something, if they get a hundred pounds bigger, boom, there's a hundred dollars a head, yeah. you know, just that fast. So when you're working your calves and if you don't want to keep heifers, every time you get a, a bull calf, you need to be pretty happy about pretty that because you're going to get 75 <laughs> bucks a head more when you sell them, you know, or, or more, maybe even a little more than that. So, uh, yeah, when we're working calves, well, we just love to, have to cut the bull cut calves mm -hmm. because they're worth more. And mm -hmm. it, unless you're trying to build a, build your herd up, obviously, and you want to keep keep some good heifers, heifers back. But for, for selling, yep. more with the steers. Yep, that's right. For selling, uh, you know, to 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 bring in more revenue, you know, it's, it's sure better to, to, get, uh, to get the bull calves. If you don't mind, could you walk me through the process when I bring the uh, wean calves here to the cell barn. Mm -hmm. So after they, I unload them from the trailer, what's that, what, what happens to them after they get unloaded? Well, Josh will ask you, you know, obviously your name and address, and if you're in the computer, and, and uh, most of the time, uh, you know, if it, he'll ask you if you're going to pick up your check, and then um, the shop program, and, and if you've got an affidavit on the shots and the okay. weaning and such, and then uh, we'll unload them, and then they'll tag and be sorted for size and, and sex. You know, we'll sort the steers off the heifers, and then we try to group them up in as big a bunches as we can, you know, and make them all alike. So you try and shoot for more the un uniformity. Right. Okay. And, uh, you know, and so well, sometimes people understand, you know, there'll be a, we'll sell a single calf, but it might weigh as much as... If they look at their sell sheet, you know, they're, here's a 500-pound calf. Why didn't it sell with the 500-pounders? Well, it might be because it's real short or, okay. you know, and it just doesn't match. And so, but, uh, you know, we try to group them up as, you know, as big as, as much as we can because obviously the bigger the bunch, the, the more they're going to bring because people, uh, they, they like to buy uniformity and they like to buy volume and bigger, bigger bunches. So, you know, the... The bigger the bunch, generally, uh, you know, the the bigger the price, obviously. Okay. So. Well, that, that's good to know because I know just talking with people, it's like they bring in maybe fifteen, and they expect them all to be ran together, <laughs> and five come in here, two come in here, yeah. and then the rest. So, it's good to know that you guys kind of group them up based on more uniformity, ever a similar weight than. Um, so that, that does kind of lead me to another question. Um, so mine are mainly all black, mm -hmm. but like I said, I got those two different ones that have a little different color. Is there a price difference? Red Angus cattle have gotten pretty popular in okay. the last few years. And we've got guys that'll run black and red Angus bulls. And unless, I mean, they're made the same, look the same, perform the same, we'll sell, we'll sell them together. But some of your, your breeds, your your red breed, you know, are exotic, mm -hmm. and and they don't, uh, you know, they'll be just a different frame score. Right. So we don't okay. necessarily, if, if if we got a set of calves that are that are the same breed, such as red and black Angus, you know, we can make a big bunch of them, and uh, and we don't have a guy here that specifically wants to buy red cattle or. Or black cat. Now, every once in a while, we got a guy that wanted all blacks or something. But if we know that beforehand, we might mm, color no. the cattle. But okay. um, so it's not really more of the color; it's more just the uniformity. It's the frame score. Frame score. Yep. Okay. Because a lot of those red, uh, you know, say a, a semi tall cross calf, he's he's going to be a lot taller than than and some right. of the some of the Angus yes, or right. you know, and uh, the, you know, you just can't throw them. You know, we, you can't just throw them on there because they just don't, they don't look right. When, when you sorted them up, you, you know, you want them to look like peas in a pod and, and uh, to get the most out of them. But uh, right now, like I said, the red, red cattle are, are uh, you know, they, they've proven they yield and grade as good as the black cattle. They take the heat in the summer better according to, 
you know, a lot of people that's done studies on this, you know, because their hide doesn't get as hot and mm -hmm. they'll be out grazing instead of standing in the pond. And yeah. So we we don't discriminate, uh, uh, you know, unless the, sometimes we have a, a seller that wants to sell these red calves separate from his black calves, maybe just kind of see if there's to see a, if there's, if do his own research, right. kind of, yeah. Yeah, if there's a differentiation in price, whether he should maybe go all to red bulls or go all to black bulls or, okay. or something. Is there any other tips you can think of, maybe? Oh, you know, the only other thing that uh, I guess that you could head off a lot of trouble um, is the flesh on animals. Okay. Um, you can overfeed those calves and... There, you know, there's a lot of people that want to sell you feed, preconditioning chow, and, and they want you to, you know, wean your calves on a cell feeder and it's going to stay, they're going to stay healthier and all this, and, and that is fine. The buyers don't want to buy your flesh. They want to put that on themselves. And so it's a double-edged sword if you get your calves too fat because okay. you've spent a lot of money on feed right. and you're taking a deduction on price when you sell them. If you're trying to sell calves to a guy that wants to take them home, background them, and then eventually send them to the feedlot, he doesn't want to buy a calf that's fat. And you'll take a, a big okay. deduction on a calf that's been fed too hard. Okay. And because, you know, they get they get fat and they, it, they, they finish at a smaller finish weight because, you know, they just, they don't have time to grow. To grow. And they don't have a f the frame, you know, and they mm -hmm. just they did, they just get fat. And but once you get them going, you know, you need to back them off that feed and just try to grow them, and, and that'll pay you dividends. But you just got to remember when, you know, you're selling to them, and when a set of fat calves come in the ring, you know, weaned or unweaned, it doesn't matter. They're going to take a deduction because they do not want to buy. The flesh. Fleshy. They want to put the flesh on with their feet. Okay. And, and the other thing is, uh, you know, uh, trying to feed them the morning of the sale extra doesn't work. You're not gaining anything. Gotcha. And another thing, I guess, is uh, people that think that they they can haul their calves 80 miles to a different sale barn. Chances are, they're not. They're not going to do any good. Uh, the market's the market. But, uh, but, you know, you haul those cattle 80 miles and take the shrink and pay the trucking and do this and that. You're not gaining anything. So that's another thing. I mean, on, on your calves, walking through them when you're feeding them uh, gentles those calves down. That's why I don't like about weaning calves on a, on a creep feeder unless you take the time to walk through them. Because mm -hmm, then they really don't know and the, they're a little more skittish. And... Yeah, they don't have uh, human contact. Yes. You know, the feed truck augers it in <laughs> and see you later. See you later. <laughs> you know, and so... Uh, you don't have to push them out of the way to get the feed in the... Right. I've, I've had to do that. You've done that. We've all get done that. Way. Now, we've got quite a few fence line bunks since, you know, uh, to make it easier and, and, and you know, that... That's nice feeding, but unless you take the time to walk, walk around through. them and walk behind them and stuff, uh, uh, we've noticed our cattle get wilder. If you, you know, if you, if you hand feed them is the best way mm -hmm. to calm them down and get them used to humans. And, and yep. uh, we've noticed the cattle getting a little bit wilder, but we also noticed the cattle that are wilder be the gander cattle through the ring because okay. they just they're nervous. They're nervous. Okay. You know, so for whatever that's worth. Yeah, no, it's nice to know that the few that I can go and touch and scratch on actually might help. So they're not gonna they're not gonna shrink up as much. A, a gentle scent of calves. So that's okay. just the way it is. And it's probably safer for you guys inside oh. the room. <laughs> yeah, and so oh. now back we got yeah. we, you know we got a few sets. The guys will, uh, you know, they'll. Uh, you know, we'll have two crews sorting in the morning, you know, and you'll see that one set sitting back there. They'll go get another set to go get another set. It's like, who are going to, which one of you guys are going to sort on these? And, the, you know, they, but they like, know oh, they're, somebody else can do that. They know they're wild. And another thing is, I mean, on wild cattle and, you know, we, we've got concrete, we, we use a lot of sand to try to keep 
but the wilder the cattle. Uh, oh, maybe more slippery. Yeah, the more insurance injuries. claims you're going to have. Mm-hmm. You're going to, you know, or they might break a leg or, or break a nose or, yeah. you know, and, and so somebody ends up paying for that, whether it be us or the insurance company or, you know, if they get them home and uh, the next morning and they can't walk, they're crippled, you know, we got to make that right with them. Okay. And we don't, we don't ask the seller to, make, I mean, that's our deal. And we've made a lot of deals right with them guys, so we're, they're sitting in the seats next week. Yeah, you know, that's good. You turn your back on them and tell them, well, you're 21 and you bought them. Well, guess what? They're not going to come back. You and... won't see them again. Right. So that's uh, that's just a, the way it is. But, you know, those wild cattle there, you know, they'll tear some stuff up. And <laughs> you got to be careful back yeah. there. Yeah. So what's the best way people can get a hold of you? Is it calling Cell Barn or calling your guys' cell phones? <laughs> or well, all the above? <laughs> my voicemail is always full and I... <laughs> You know, Josh does a lot better answering the phone. Linda, the, the cell barn phone is forwarded to Linda's cell phone, so we okay. try to we try to take every call, good okay. or bad. We yeah. try to, you know, and uh, so you, you normally you won't have to an, talk to an answering machine. We try to somebody will try. And if I miss it, if we're doing something, I always try to call them back. Besides our regular Friday sales, is there any other sales coming up? We do have a cow sale. Um, uh, we don't like to be closed two weeks in a row, but Christmas hits on, on a Friday. On a Friday, yes. So the New Year's. And then New Year's, on, uh, yep, okay. So we're going to be closed two weeks in a row, and I hate it because we get stacked up after that, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah. But uh, the boys are, are having a cow sale on uh, the 27th of December. That's and, a Sunday. Yes, okay. we have our cow sales okay. on Sunday. And uh, we don't have a cow sale here unless we got some good cows to build around. That way, when people come in to buy cows, they can buy in confidence, and, and they'll be good cows. I, I, I'd rather have a toothache than a cow sale if you don't have good cows to sell. Gotcha. And so we'll, we'll have, we, we, we usually have four or five a year, generally. We will have their, your guys' cell phone numbers on the, at the end of the video. Okay. Um, so if people have any questions on selling cows or calves or anything, Please don't be afraid to give uh, Maury or Josh or the Selborn a, a call. And we have a website they can go okay. to, and uh, a lot of people use that. We're going to work hard for you, whether you're here or not here. It's not going to make any difference. So. Yeah, but you guys, I mean, you kind of make whoever comes and sells, you make them kind of feel like family year after year. So thank you guys for putting all of your hard work in. Thank you. Thank you as well. All right, if you guys, like I said, have any cattle, questions on selling your cattle give the cell barn a call if you have any other questions on pasture rates or um feed rations for your cattle give the extension office a call so all right thank you guys for uh, watching today and see ya <laughs> something like that <laughs> we're done right <laughs>